Michael, thank you very much. Down to four here will be three after this game. From Volunteer, we head left, and there is Lomity Stadium, where tonight, Nolensville, Tennessee, and El Segundo, California play in an elimination game. We have seen one great game already on this field. We expect this one to be great as well. The team from the West starting to feel good about themselves, partly because, well, they're starting to feel good. They've been sick. They're a little healthier now. Our first pitch is coming up. Here she comes. Stella Weaver is in. Weaver's wheels make a big difference. 3-2. Strike three. Macaulay, masterful. Center field, forget it. Heads up. Left field launch. Back and over the wall. Big fly, Brooks. And welcome back, everyone. ESPN's continuing coverage of the Little League World Series presented by T-Mobile. We are in South Williamsport, Pennsylvania. One of those addresses you hear, you know exactly what you're talking about. Williamsport equals Little League World Series, and we are getting down to the end of it, the nitty-gritty. We started with 20 teams, and we are peeling them off. We are getting set for the e in a moment. Your impressions of what we saw? Oh, well, just what we saw that last game going extra innings. But I'm not going to lie, Rav. I mean, this is the game that I've been waiting for because these two teams, especially when you think about Tennessee, Stella and the fellas. I mean, this has been the storyline. Stella Weaver, what she has done in this tournament has been the most exciting thing. Yeah, she's been the dominant headline and certainly a Tennessee team that's been here three times. Take a look at what Stella does because it's not just her ability to hit and run. She can pitch, too. Make it history, Rav. Third hit in this tournament that's the most ever by the female in the U.S., but this is what she's known for. The wheels count around. This was the game winner. The real story, though, in their win, as much as Stella Weaver, what she did, it was Lucas McCauley, a complete game. 12 punch outs, no walks. He was absolutely dealing. And you think about who's also been on the mound for them. We talk about the fellas. Grayson May is the fella. She is with Stella and Julie Fowdy. Grayson May, Stella Weaver with me. Stella, we're starting with you. You're setting records left and right. You're the first female in the United States to get three hits in the Little League World Series. Seventh female on the mound. What has all of this experience been like for you? It's been crazy being here, being with this team, being with our coach. But me and Coach Randy also made a bucket list, which was getting the most hits for in the U.S. for girls and getting the most hits out of the whole tournament. And like playing different positions that other girls haven't played. But it's been like really fun. We've did that bucket list. We've gotten one down. So yeah, I was just gonna say one down. Here we go. Let's go. Grayson, seasoned veteran here, second time at the Little League World Series on the mound as well. How are we feeling in this big elimination game? And what did you say to the team? What advice did you give them? Do not be nervous. We've been in this situation before. In regionals, we lost the second game, just like we did lose the second game here. And we're just, it's the first game to us, basically. Yeah, you guys have been really good in elimination games. Stella, finally, for every young girl and boy watching out there, what do you want them to know when they see you play? Um, feed off the good energy from me, uh, watch what I do, and just have as much fun. Just, if you play soft, if you play baseball and you're a girl, then just have as much fun as you can and believe in yourself. Right on, believe in yourself. All right, you two, good luck tonight. Have fun out there under the lights. Thank you, Julia. Yeah, since 2021, Nolansville, who's been here three times, has got 11 wins in games that they had to win, elimination games. There have been some tough competitors along the way, but a healthy California team may be as difficult as any. Yeah, and they've been mashing the ball. Ever since the first game, balls have been flying out of Lomini Stadium like nothing. They have two guys that have been dominating this whole series. Two home runs apiece by them, Brody Brooks and Lewis Lappy. Lewis Lappy threw yesterday, had a dominant performance, a lot of strikeouts, hit one way up on the hill yesterday for his second home run. And then Brody Brooks coming in late with another big home run, having fun while he's doing it. These guys are doing what they do best. And talking with Danny Bully, he said, listen, we're not trying to hit home runs, we're trying to hit line drives and accidentally We'll hit those home runs. We'll accidentally 
they got the most home runs here at the Little League World Series team wise. They do. They got four. Two guys have two. They're hitting 242 as a team. What they now know, we win tonight. We play for a United States championship. The kids from Nolansville know all about winning as well. First pitch when we come back. Let's go. Masterful. Weaver's wheels make a big difference. Tennessee survives. Big kids, big hitters. Over the wall. That's it. California live for another day. The Little League Baseball World Series on ESPN is presented by T-Mobile. That's America's largest and fastest 5G network. And a look at how the Little League World Series has evolved over the years. We still have plays at the plate, though, that's for sure. And we had a couple in our first game. And Lomini looks a lot different. In fact, wow. volunteers showed up. It was once a parking lot. Now it's a beautiful baseball field. And you take a look at Lomini, where it is Nolensville, Tennessee, a team that has been here three years in a row. No manager has ever done that until Randy Huth does it with Nolensville, Tennessee. El Segundo, California on the other side. Black and yellow, you'll see a lot of Vanderbilt references. This is just southeast of Nashville and a lot of connections to the great program that Tim Corbin runs there. Three consecutive appearances. Blake Money once played for him. These kids are money. Let's meet them. My name is Grayson May. My favorite player is Julio Rodriguez. My name is Jace Barney, and my favorite food is barbecue chicken pizza. My name is Nash Carter, and my favorite baseball player is Danji Swanson. My name is Turner Blaylock, and my favorite emoji is the freezing emoji. My name is Ty McKenzie, and my favorite player is Ken Griffey Jr. My name is Carter Gomillion, and my favorite food is pizza. My name is Lucas McCullough, and my favorite dessert is chocolate ice cream. My name is Corbin Cyphers, and my dream job is to be a professional MLB umpire. My name is Kel McCarty, and my favorite candy is Kit Kat. My name is Gideon Shepler, and my favorite actor is Adam Sandler. My name is Stella Weaver, and my dream job is to work in the MOB. My name is Jackson Tabor, and my favorite player is Alex Bregman. Batting order brought to us by PNC Bank. This team and Nolensville Little League really brought to us by the Hooth family. His dad was instrumental, and in Randy wanted to become a coach. His dad, a longtime coach, and Randy has got this group playing really, really well. And pretty much one through nine, they are terrific hitters and have had a lot of success. You get to 10, 11, 12, and they're all looking for their first hit. Carter is a terrific player. He and Lucas McCauley, three hits each. Jackson Tabor has hit the ball and gotten on four times. Stella Weaver, three for six, and has scored two runs. They're dealing with another big kid on the mound for California. Six feet, 170 pounds. He can bring it in like a lot of these guys from California. 75 miles an hour is what he'll hit on the radar gun. A good breaking ball off of it. And that's a first pitch strike to Carter. I mean, look, if this was a basketball game, it'd be pretty one-sided. Right? I mean, the, the kids from California are much bigger. But the beauty of baseball is that doesn't matter at all. 0-1. Oh, on the ground. In the hole, Brooks, strong arm. That looks like a college shortstop. Pretty play. Perfect placement there. Brooks gets the ball, fires it over there, right over the top. <laughs> that, that thing didn't move. That was like a dart. It was. He's got a good target over there. Lewis Lappy at first base. Next up, Lucas McCauley, the pitching hero from yesterday. He swings at the first one, one hopper. Declan McRoberts, two down. Left side of the infield, busy on the first two. Three pitches, two batters, let's go. Aggressive swing in Tennessee right now. Turner Blaylock, he is the second baseman. He is two for five in this Little League World Series. Kalish trying to get them to put the ball in play and trust his defense, and it's a good one. And they are aggressive early, swinging at another first pitch. California benefited last night. Rhode Island threw the ball around, especially on the mound. He had some pass balls and wild pitches, and that hurt him. On the other side, California is the only United States team not to have a wild pitch or a pass ball. 
Tiger Woods won the Grand Slam at St. Andrews. In four days, he didn't hit one bunker. There's over 100 bunkers. Not to have a wild pitch or a pass ball at a Little League World Series is impossible. Give a lot of credit to Lucas Keldorf behind the plate. I mean, he has been just absolutely nails. He's been sick, one of many that have, the flu has run through. Hasn't mattered at all. One, two, and no, that's a little high. We'll check third, no swing. And Todd, the count is. Two, two, here we go. Listen, as a hitter, you got a guy this tall stature on the mound. His release, probably five feet further than usual. You got to get that foot down, get it singing. He strikes him out. He will end up picking up one strikeout. A couple of ground balls, nine pitches in the inning for Jackson Kalish. Tennessee takes to the field. The California kids come to the plate. Must win to stay alive. All right, check the beach, check your wallet. Yes, check the talent. El Segundo, they got, what do you mean we got, we got the wallet? Let's go. SoCal in the house. And let's talk about this group from El Segundo. It's a big beach community. It's located just a few minutes from LAX. Chevron is there. The LA Times moved there. And then they went around and did a survey. Is it El Segundo or El Segundo? And the local natives will tell you it's Segundo. Others that have moved there will say Segundo. We say these kids are cool. Let's meet them. Brought to you by PNC Bank. My name is Lennon Salazar, and my favorite player is Buster Posey. My name is Finley Green, and my favorite food is mangoes. My name is Quinn Bowley, and my favorite food's In N Out. My name is Lucas Keldorf, and my dream job is to be a D1 baseball coach. My name is Colby Lee. My favorite band is ACDC. My name is Max Baker, and my favorite artist is Ice Spice. My name is Brody Brooks, and my favorite player is Ken Griffey Jr. My name is Declan McRoberts, and my favorite team is the Dodgers. My name is Ollie Parks, and my favorite actor is Jim Carrey. My name is Louis Laffey, and my favorite food is a good steak and a baked potato. My name is Crow Connor, and my favorite team is the Angels. My name is Jackson Kalish, and my favorite artist is MF Doom. Danny Bowley, terrific manager, grounded, keeps these kids in line, accountability. He's all about teamwork and family, comes from a long line of coaches. His background's really in volleyball coaching, but got a chance to spend some time with his son here at the Little League World Series, once in a lifetime experience, and he's making sure to drink it all in. He's got a really, really good team. The West is traditionally strong. They are again here with this group that have both literally and figuratively grown up together. They all sprouted apparently at the same time. And when you talk Brooks, Lappy, Kalish, Keldorf, they are some big, big kids. We'll start with Brooks. He's got two homers already. Ball. And the first one, a real slow one that gets by. And it is one ball, no strikes. See a lot of the spin from Grayson May. That's what he does, a little crafty lefty. Three for five, two homers. Fastball, center field, not going to stay up. Down in front of Barney and a leadoff single for Brody Brooks. He's got four hits now with the Little League World Series. A little four for six spot for him. And here comes Lappy. He's three for five with two homers. Ball. Starts off with a spinner, and this is a team that's got quick hands. They can react off that slow one and still hit it out. A lot of pressure on May. That one comes oh. inside, and it's a ball. See, to make that curveball work, you got to be effective with the fastball first. If you throw that right out to shoot, that's the first thing you see. Your eyes will get a lot bigger. There is that fastball, and it is fouled off from Lucas Lappy. Defense, out of respect, rightfully so, deep. Another fastball, much better in on the hands. 
And that's where they've been pitched when there's been success. We saw Texas and DJ Jablonski do that. Get in on the hands in the kitchen of these big guys. Hard to do. Six foot one, 153. Five foot one, 83 on the mound. Off speed, that's foul down the line and left, and that was home run distance. Two hundred and twenty five feet from the left field foul pole to the right field foul pole. Two and two to May fires one and that was a quick pitch a little high three and two. He likes to go all casual and then come fire it in there. Oof, hard hit up the middle. Holding at second base is Brooks. So a couple of fastballs have been turned around, and the first two are on. That one right there just got a little bit too much of the plate. Kind of got a side tilt, kind of two seam action there, trying to get some movement. Not much there. The big guy took it right back up the middle. And now the first left hander is Jackson Kalish. And he rolls one foul. California's played three games. They beat Ohio four to three. They lost to Texas. That was the Jablonski game. And then they beat Rhode Island yesterday 9 3. No. Not getting that call. And it's one ball, one strike. He was he was counting on that. Kalish, another six footer. He weighs 170. That's better. That one does land. You heard a great uh, Mickey Mouse impression from Jackson Kalish earlier this week. And there is the 5-1 versus the six-footer. Quick pitch here, fouled it off. That one worked, almost barely got a piece from Kalish. That's what Grayson May just crafty trying to spin it. These are overpowering hitters. Woo. Slow and slower. And the strikeout of Kalish. Oh, look at that thing. Kind of like an Ephus. Quick pitch with the fastball. Let me slow you down just a little bit more. Eyes get big. Sorry about it. Pulled the chain. Lucas Keldorf is the catcher. He's been kind of dealing with that bug they have a little more recently than others. He's three for seven here in the series. He's got a double. He's got two runs batted in. Two fast runners out there on first and second. And this one is up the middle. They may turn two. They don't. The ball is thrown away and out of play. And it's going to bring in a run for the West. Nash Carter's throw sailed. And McCauley had no chance to get it. And it's 1-0 California. And some frustration from Carter. He makes this throw 90% of the time. Taylor made. Rushed it just a little bit too quickly. And it had a good opportunity right there. If you just slow down just a little bit, find your target. Fielder's choice error there on Carter. one nothing for Max Baker. Nearly got through the top five in the order without any damage. But California is on the board first. Couldn't tell what happened on that throw because Carter is so reliable at shortstop, so good fundamentally. And he had time. Baker up the middle. That one gets down. Keldorf is being held right there as they get the ball back in quickly. Well, they're doing a good job against Grayson May. Three hits in the inning. The quick pitch. He's, been, he's done three of those so far, all for fastballs. He'd love to see him mix up a little off-speed pitch next time he does that just to keep the hitters off balance. Great piece of hitting right back up the middle. And you can see what this California team is capable of. First and third for Crew O'Connor. This has been a different part of the lineup, different story. One for five hitters. Yes. 
hit 452. 6 through 12 only have two hits out of 35 at bats. On the ground, backing up at third. McKenzie, strong throw though, and is able to retire Crew O'Connor. Instead of charging, he played it back. Grayson May off the mound. California off the mat. They lead it 1-0 through one at the Little League World Series. Hey, what's up, Nolansville? This is Chris Jansen. This one goes out to Stella and all the fellas. Congratulations on getting to the World Series. I hope you guys win all the way to the top. Bring it home to Tennessee. Go do your thing in Williamsport. And uh, just know that we'll be watching in the clubhouse. We are so excited for you guys and rooting you on and watching you on TV every time you play. We have great faith in you. Wow, three years in a row. That's just incredible. This is such an amazing journey. Uh, in y'all's chapter, and I just wish you the best of luck uh, Bring a trophy back to Nashville. Good luck. You're in the College World Series uh, phrase, Jess. A little man crush on Dansby early when he was a collegiate, got a nice relationship going. She was she was our Dansby sort of correspondent. Great family. I Great. mean, <laughs> just one of those. I mean, he was like picture perfect, number one draft pick, all the things. Parents, tremendous. And sister that played softball. That's yeah. really what won me over. Oh, is that so right? We're going to be honest. I, I love the honest. Let's be authentic here. <laughs> Phrase, you want to say anything? Nah, no, word of the day now, authentic. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have one a game. Team Mexico, how about that? They knock off Japan. Japan gets one rule by Chinese Taipei and then beaten by Mexico. Japan will not be playing for the international championship. Big swing to start things off. Kale McCarty, he will be followed by Jackson Tabor and Ty McKenzie. McCarty is two for seven, Tabor behind him four for seven. They like their depth in their order. Ball. That didn't miss by much, we go one ball, one strike. Only one through that part of the lineup for California is a success. Vote. Vote. Three balls and a strike. This is where Nolan Phil's got to be patient here. Got to get something perfect here on the 3 1 count. That's a walk, buddy. Ravi, I am down here with Ty McKenzie's parents, Ty and Amy. And Amy, when I saw Ty was the oldest of five kids, I had to come check in on you, check in on the chaos. <laughs> How are you doing it? Um, we're doing good. Do you want to take one with you and watch him for the rest of the game? It's a fun time. JT. So, yeah, we survived. JT. You're doing great. You want to, you want to, she wanted to touch the mic as well. Ty, this is the first summer you have had in a very long time. NFL player, coached in the NFL. How long has it been as you've been able to watch your son like this? Uh, it's been a, it's been a long time. I mean, it's been, I was doing the math earlier. It's been like 29 years that this is the first time in August that I'm not playing or coaching. Uh, but it's a blessing. God works in mysterious ways. And for the opportunity to be here with this team, for the journey through District, state, regionals, and now here for the World Series. It's been a blessing, and, and I'm very fortunate for it. Yeah, and, and Ty crushing it, leading the team with RBIs. But he also plays the violin. Every parent out there wants to know, how do you keep your kid? It's been a couple years now. How do you keep your kid playing an instrument, Amy? Well, it's important to me that he is super well-rounded, and our school over at Lipscomb Academy, they are in the same thing, so they make them choose chorus, band, or orchestra. He chose the strings. We went with it, and it gets them out of their comfort zone, which I love. So, you know, be comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Be comfortable in the uncomfortable. Enjoy the tournament. Congratulations on making it here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. McKenzie family, after uh, our lead man, Phil Orleans Hart, years ago, Phil Orleans, who runs all of baseball at ESPN, said, I need everybody to be comfortable being uncomfortable. You know who wasn't uncomfortable? Lucas Keldorf on that pop-up. Not easy play for a catcher, and he, he made it look fairly easy. He's been money behind the plate. Nothing gets by him. 
We've seen him dive in, all kinds of stuff. Hey. I really do love the idea, though, that at the school they make you kind of play an instrument, sing in the chorus, get in the orchestra, to do something other than just sports, and keep your nose off your phone if you can. Ground ball in the hole. Brooks to second, to first. No, they will not get McKenzie. But a well done play by Brody Brooks into the hole to flip to Lee. Talking with the Curacao team. Mandatory in school. They got to learn a couple different languages. I beautiful. I think that's so beautiful. I wish I, I wish I learned another language better than I had. Here's Stella Weaver. She's the right fielder. Very good hitter. McKenzie at first. She has gone the other way through the hole between first and second a couple of times, and also a line shot right back up the middle. Okay. We got a glove out there. We're, we're waiting. Maybe a Weaver homer. Their first home run this All Star season. Ooh, hit that one hard. That's up the middle. That's where Stella Weaver hits it, and she turned it around. Another hit, her fourth at the Little League World Series. Tied for the most hits ever now. It doesn't matter, U.S. International, Stella Weaver. Is, you talk about some pop, too. We've seen her go down and meet different pitches. This one explosive, because the defense of California has been so good. That shot past Colby Lee like he was the pitcher. Now what does Jace Borney do? Swing at the first one and foul it off. To Jess's point, Little League World Series history. The bucket list is now complete. She has tied Sayaka Tsushima, who did it in 1998 for Japan. Well, not only do you get here, you come here and you make an impact. Wait, 1998? That was a good year. What happened in 98 at the World Series? Frazier's team Won it all. You didn't face her, did you? Yes, I did. He did. Oh, you did? I didn't strike her out, but she didn't get that record setting hit off me. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Left field, and it is just foul. Well, you, so you can put yourselves in the shoes of anybody that's faced a female at the Little League World Series. What does that do to you on the mound? No, you go out at the same way. You know they're good hitters. They can play the game just like anybody else. Attack them, try and get it. Get her out, and guess what? You give it to the, you give her your best shot, and that's the bottom line. Happy for each side. Swing and a miss, and the ball was dropped, but we will just throw it down to first, and that'll end the inning. They get two on. Stella Weaver makes history at Lomity. Her fourth hit at the World Series. California won, Tennessee nothing. Chinese Taipei, it was a close one for a while against Curacao. They may see him again. Curacao is still alive, but Chinese Taipei moves right into the international championship game on Saturday at 12.30 on ABC. Mexico takes care of Japan, and Mexico stays alive. So it's Mexico and Curacao for the right to play in the international championship game, and that will be tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern time. A little chance of rain tomorrow, so we'll see if the games will be played, whether they're on, on time, on schedule, or perhaps, worst case scenario, move to Friday. And if so, then you play Friday and the championship games on Saturday. But stay tuned to ESPN, of course, to find out what's happening with the weather. And you never know in Williamsport, forecasts aren't always what happens. That ball ripped, and what a start here to the second inning. Declan McRoberts, he picks up a hit. And they're all over Grayson May. He's trying to trick them. But they have hit the ball hard five times against May. And that's the second hit of the World Series for Declan. Swing's not afraid to be late. And that's why they're prepared for all the off speed. Quinn Bowley. Ball one. Fouled off. You learned something that uh, the sign we saw earlier with El Segundo, the beach, your wallet, and the talent 
and your wallet is uh, a tune, an album from a tribe called Quest. Got that now. Getting hip. I'm going to try. Todd should have been all, he's all 90s. <laughs> where, are you, where are you on a tribe called Quest? Love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all going to love it after this. Mm. Another breaking pitch, and it seems like the slower it goes sometimes, the more effective it is. Boley is gone. Second strikeout for May. He's got to make hay against the bottom of this lineup because Brooks and Lappy and Kalish and Keldorf and Baker are so, so tough to get out. Holly Parks, one for seven in the series. He's up with a man on first, McRoberts. Yeah, check swing, slow roller, Carter, Laylock first. We'll get just one, it was a slow roller and a check swing. But the fielder's choice takes McRoberts off the bases and parks to first. It's one of those things where you see the big breaking ball. You either got to commit to that early in your mind, or you just lay off until you get that fastball because it's going to be very hard to throw for many strikes. But the manipulation he's doing here on the mound is very great. Right by Finley Green, a little late on that fastball. Can't be in between. No balls and a strike to the five foot 97 pounder. Hey. Thirtieth pitch of the night coming up here for Grayson May. It's a good one, and it's called the ball down a little bit. He thought that was a strike. I thought it was a strike. Me too. Frazier had it as a strike. Especially against these hitters. It's hard to throw four of them. Well, Every one that it looks like you think it's a strike, and it's not. It's another pitch, you know, on your line, and you only get 85 of them, and they're a little thin on their pitching tonight. 2-2. Ooh, oh, got yeah. him swinging at one on his fists. Sheath it, California, leading one zip after two. A couple of punch outs in the inning for Grayson May. He's got three in the game. Come back with the breaking ball in on that. Back to ESPN's coverage of the Little League World Series. It's presented by T-Mobile. And Little League wants to expand, extend a special thank you to its official sponsors. We're going ballpark buns tonight and rolls and Capital One. They provide year-round support to the Little League program. They create opportunities and experiences for the families and communities. There are those dogs. Little League wants to thank its dedicated volunteers who make the program a special experience for millions of kids around the world. Let's go around the horn. Frazier, uh, toppings on a dog for you. A uh, little, little mustard, little ketchup, sauerkraut as well. All right. Mendoza. Mustard, ketchup, onions. Ooh. Oh, okay. I can go there. Mm -mm. No, no one a relish, man? No, relish, no. relish is no bueno. I'll do it on a Chicago dog. That's part of the style, right? A little yeah. celery salt. I can't, you know what? I'm surprised you didn't say a Dodger dog. Those are one of my favorite hot dogs of all time. That's the dog, but the toppings is what he yeah. was asking. I'm about. all about that. Should have brought up the Dodger dog. And the key when you throw ketchup or mustard on a relish, you go underneath the dog, bury it low, then you throw the dog on top. We're getting too crazy yeah, with we, the dog. This is very no. in depth. Oh, no, that's true. Show it. You got to show it. Let the people know what you're putting on there. No, no, thing. no. Flavor, more flavor. It's guaranteed. <laughs> You know the cup. You know the cupcake trick too. How to eat a cupcake? Just one bite. Wipe no, 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 and no. <laughs> no, you take the cupcake and you take the bottom of it off, and no. then you put that on top so uh, the frosting's in the middle, I've and it's that. a. I have seen that. Thank you. Is that a sandwich now? I'm, I'm no, on that. it's just frosting right. in the middle, so you get it on every bite. No, I want some around my mouth. I want it all over. I'm hey. hungry. <laughs> You don't just tune into the Little League World Series to watch baseball. I mean, there's life lessons being taught. You'll see, Frisch. You're going to try it next time on a cup pick. Mm -hmm. ah! Believe the umpire thought that was strike three. I mean, we, we, or he was just practicing. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's practicing. That's okay. Try different things. Well, let's see. Maybe we'll see it again. Nope, three and two. Last night, Frey sent a uh, 
picture <laughs> of a ball strike counter with the count two and two to Tim and I at some ridiculous hour. And nobody texted well, me because back. we were all asleep. No. You turned us in that. 10:30. Asleep. Maybe it was a little. Pissed, it was definitely <laughs> yeah. It's 10:30 West Coast time. I saw you leaving to go from training at 10:30. <laughs> right. Uh oh. Three and two to Gideon Shepler. He gone. Strike out number three for Jackson Kalish as he climbed the ladder. A little Kenley Jansen delivery over the top with a little cut piece. Head down, not looking when he throws. Exactly. Yeah, I see you. Swing and a miss from Corbin Cyphers. Cute kid Corbin, he's the catcher on this team. And I tell you, Corbin, when he sees his pitcher a little off, he's going to run out there. Yesterday he said, I went out there and I said, breathe. Just breathe. Calm down. He's the one that wants to be a major league umpire when he grows up. But you can already see some of those signs that he'd be a terrific leader. Great catcher for a reason. Nice pitch right there. Didn't get the call. But if you're going to live out there, that's a good idea. Two balls, one strike. Popped up. Just on the screen. Right above the fans from the team from El Segundo, California. Get out of the West region. It is generally a difficult region. You've got to deal with the Hawaii teams, Northern California. They beat Northern California twice, 4 3 and 3 zip. And they beat Hawaii this year, 6 0. The team from Hawaii this year was from Hilo. Who about the strike? We've seen the recent teams from Honolulu have great success. Okay. Kayla's getting a little frustrated by a very tight strike zone tonight. Didn't get the one down, didn't get the one up. It's full, three and two. center field Baker came in then he took a few steps back and he's there for the second out good hit by Corbin Cyphers see again we, we got the catch up on top yes maybe yes. you maybe you roll the dog oh, if you have to oh, oh. no no, no. Dog? let's no. stay away from that I would do chili not nacho cheese Ooh. okay well <laughs> no that, that, that whole thing becomes a no. There's some relish on your right. Like if there was any thought to bringing that up to the booth, please don't. Please do. No. Can you do the nacho cheese? No, the don't, I don't want the cheese. Oh. Well, what do you think that was? Yeah, that's the cool. whole well, thing. I'm, I'm telling you, saying just don't bring the hot dog up because there's stuff on top of the dog. You don't want the mess. I want the mess. I know, but you wanted those the dogs. They had cheese all over them. I'll, I'll take it anyway. Despite despite this guy. you guys, I'll take it. No. Carter Gamillion bats now. Uh oh, they're coming. They're coming. Okay, what is that chili? That looks like chili on the top and cheese. <laughs> it's got everything. It's a lot on there. You need a fork. I mean, I, I look. I was in the mood for a hot dog. So please, if that really is making its way up here, j just ketchup and relish. That guy can't do that. You can you can wipe it off. No, that becomes okay. messy. Lots of under the dog. Yep. Kalish has gone to a three ball count on all three. Strike zone just got a little bit tougher just now. <laughs> Where was that? That was a really, and he's saying it, wow. Well, anytime the hitter stops and doesn't go to first, the million's like, all right, I'll take it. Take what you can get. Turns the lineup over. Talk to the coaches, and for the most part, the umpiring all the way through the summer has been really good. And what they ask for is just consistency. Grayson May squares, pulls it back, gets the strike called against him, and it is 0 and 1. He's looking for his first hit. Pitcher for tonight. 
Lone batter. Two down in the top of the third. Bolt. Now Kalish is saying, well, that was pretty much the exact same spot. The last three in the order for Tennessee is yet to get a hit. They are 0 for 18 coming into the game. Bolt. Two balls, one strike. Top of the order. Coming up next, Nash Carter. If they can get there. McRoberts is in on the grass at third base. That next one has popped out of play. The kids getting into a little kettle corn. Good at bat right now from the opposing pitcher and another three ball count from Jackson Kalish gets a quick meeting from Brody Brooks. This will be pitch number 50. He swings and misses in the glove it goes. That is another strikeout. Four in the game for Jackson Kalish. Coming soon to theaters, that's Friday, August 25th. Two days from now, it's The Hill, the inspirational st true story about family, faith, and a baseball miracle. Dennis Quaid is in it. He stars in The Hill. It's rated PG, and you can check out the trailer right now. Hope you're enjoying your Wednesday about as much as we are about to. I see Ravi. one there with a little ketchup on it. Let's go, yes. let's go, let's go. Holy smoke. Dog o Rama. This has everything you could ever want. Perfection. Okay, good. Perfection. One for each of us, a two for each this of us. This is all for Frage, because oh, that oh, is a go. mess. Jeez. No, he's got to crush this one. No, no, no. No, leave it right here. I will send it down to Foudy, and we will lose ourselves for about 20 minutes. Goodbye. This is definitely happening. So let's meet Grayson May. He's the kid on the mound, and of course, that is presented by Dollar Car Rental here. I will take this. By the way, the Braves, his favorite sports team, scored another run in the first inning tonight. The Mariners lost today in 10 innings. The Washington Little League team loses. The Mariners lose as well. Wings, and he's a hooper. Thank you very much. This is outstanding. Foudy's going to stand by so we can start to go bury on the doggos. Braves already knee deep. Mendoza bite in. Oh, wait a minute, McKenzie. Oh, and the scoop from McCauley. What a play, McKenzie and McCauley. Web gem. Laying out for your team. Third baseman by trade. I love it. That's my spot. Go get it, young man. Laying out on his knees. And a beautiful pick by McCauley at first base. Both corners doing what they do. Mm. And then May comes back to start off the 12th hitter in the order, Lennon Salazar. one nothing game, bottom three, jam shot here, and it's foul. Hey, we have some, seen some defense, boys, this game. This field, you're right. Oh, yeah, today, all day, keep bringing it. Allows these pitchers to throw strikes, trust the D behind you. I didn't say pack three. No pitch. Pitcher was not given the green light from our home plate umpire, Ryoji Kashi. Grace Amazing, like, but that's my game. <laughs> yeah, I gotta got be able <laughs> I to gotta go. Catch you off guard. We're gonna get Foudy involved so we can have a hot dog, and I gotta be able to go like this when I want. There is a strikeout, Julie. It's yours for the next 15. <laughs> Eat away, brother, eat away. I got Brody Brooks's family with me, mom, Tiffany, older brother, Logan. And one of the things, Logan, that Brody put, and he's been hitting it lights out, as you know, in this tournament, but he said, my older brothers, unfortunately, your other older brother, Carson, is sick right now. He can't be with you. He said, huge part of my career in terms of how I play. They taught me everything I know, and they gave me no breaks. Is that true? That, that is very true. We play, we play with the ball all the time in our garage. We're, we're giving him a hard time. We're throwing the ball as hard as we can to him. And when we hit, we're hitting absolute tanks off of him. So, How many tears did we get from Brody? 
Way too many. Way too many. Mom, I got to hear about this wiffle ball setup. Tell me about it, Tiffany. I know it's in the garage. So our garage, I think, is probably the most famous garage in El Segundo because it's a three-car garage with zero cars in it. Uh, it is fully carpeted. It's got a batting net. And that is where they are at all times, batting all of the time. It's where he's learned how to do all of that. Well, it's working. And he also said, I know he takes a lot of batting lessons. He said, if he won the lottery, he's given all his money to y'all for the 500 batting lessons or so that he has. And it's clear it's paying off. Two home runs here, leading, co-leading the entire Little League World Series. So you're going to get that lottery one day, I hope. I hope so. I hope so. Coming back to you. Thank you. All right, congratulations. Hi, Julie, thank you. Two hits tonight for Brooks. Here's Lappy, and there's nothing phrase that Carter could have done differently as a shortstop. He got rid of that in a hurry. He did everything right. Just speed kills, basically, on that one. That's a great pitch he just threw right there. In on the hands of Lappy to get ahead, 0-1. Right field, line shot. Fielded cleanly by Stella, and she gets it right back in. Boy, the top of this order is so dangerous. Brooks and Lappy, hard hit ball there by Lewis. He's got two hits tonight. He and Brody Brooks are now five for 14, five oh. for seven. So they are 10 for 14 in this series. Oh, such a beautiful look. Oh, I just love it from behind home plate like that. You see that line drive swing. So simple. Best part for May, though, he's keeping them in the ballpark. One ground ball away, getting out of the inning. Two down. I love that. Cyphers with a little bit of advice against Kalish. Maybe, hey, we got him on the off speed last time. Let's try to feed him some more. Very much an open ball game right now. One zip, off speed, fair ball down the line. Brooks is being waved in. Lappy's being waved in. Here he comes. Throw comes in. Triple Jackson Kalish. Three nothing, California. Got a breaking ball on the inner half. Stayed back on this one just enough. Nothing McCauley could do. Line drive by him down the first base line. Three bases. Huge. Hey, That's fine. Time. Look at me. Don't. I understand. You're fine. You're my guy. You know what I mean? We got a battle. I need you to battle. You're my veteran. You and Nash are my vets. You've been here before. You've been under these bright lights many times. You've played, that, what, 11 games under these lights now? You're my guy. I need you to be a dog for me. Be a dog. Let's get this guy out, and we're going to come in and score some runs, OK, bud? Hey, I believe in you instead of all these people. You can do this. You got the stuff to beat anybody. All right, bud? Hey, head up. Let's throw some strikes. Let's have a little fun, get a little swag. Let's strike some dudes out. Come on. Well, the message was sent. Do you think it was received? He's still down. Tough spot. Now he's got to deal with the cleanup hitter, Lucas Keldorf. Hey. Fastball in. Two runs in, 3 nothing on a Jackson Kalish triple. And they have continued to really hit the ball hard. Hey. Now, I got to believe that the. Uh, Garage is used by more than just, just the Brooks brothers. I think a few of the kids spent some time over there whacking wiffle balls all over the place. Too far inside. Maybe when Brody and his brothers grow up, they should open up a clothing store. Fresh. <laughs> I, I agree. Fielded, he's got to throw it quick. That's a good arm by McKenzie. If the Brooks brothers open up a store, what's it going to be called? Brooks brothers. There you go. <laughs>
clean triple right down the line, Jess. Kayla, she's getting around the beautiful looks right over the bag. Getting around the base and scoring two runs for Cali out west. Little League stats there provided by Mike Nataro for sure. And game changer, more importantly, for everybody at home. The official scorekeeping and stats technology partner of Little League in the Little League World Series. Game Changer now offers free live streaming for regular season local youth games, plus automatic video highlight clips when you stream and score your games. And if you want your child to experience the teamwork and fun of Little League Baseball or the wildly popular Little League Softball, visit playlittleleague.org and enter your address to find a Little League community program near you. Little League Softball continues to grow leaps and bounds. You must be delighted with the direction of yes. Little League softball. I credit Little League too, and all across the country, putting so much into these girls. So much fun to watch them last week. Greenville, North Carolina. Only will grow more. Well, Tennessee now in the top of the fourth inning. They need some runs, and this is maybe the inning where they can start to chip away and turn their frowns upside down. Nash Carter's the leadoff guy. Grounded out to the shortstop his first time up. Plenty of room right back up the middle. Brooks is shaded towards third at shortstop. And you can see that big, big hole if he can get one past Kalish. Yeah. Off the plate. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, you think the shortstop goes over, the second baseman goes over, but it's kind of split. Seattle, Washington waiting the winner of this one in the game tomorrow night. That's off two, two and two. That game is seven o'clock Eastern time. Seems like a lot of three, two counts coming in here. California's been getting away with it. Fifth one in a row that we've had a three ball count from Jackson Kalish. Good spoil there by Nash Carter. Nash was here last year too, as was this entire team, but he and May on the mound, the two kids that were on the team while the Little League is back. These were the two, and they have been instrumental in helping guide him here. Well, tip stayed alive. Ball, ball. A little intimidated about the whole TV thing last year, not this year. And you can kind of see how comfortable he is. His dad, Mark, one of the coaches here, terrific guy, senior associate athletic director at Vanderbilt. His mom, Emily, is a nurse. Kalish tries to get ready on the mound to throw his 59th pitch and ninth of the at bat. That one is ball four, and hurrying down to first is Nash Herder. So he's aboard. Good way to start. That's a solid take right there. After battling his way back in two strikes, laying off a nasty curveball. It's the momentum they need. Their biggest home run threat is this kid right here, Lucas McCauley, 5'7", 128. He's all about the machines and the cages and hit tracks. Throw a little golf simulator in there for good measure. If he could design his ideal garage. He can drive a golf ball about 250 yards. If he can hit baseball 225 feet, we have a new ball game. And this one is to right center. Back goes Baker, still going back. He did it! 227 feet, and it's 3-2. That one ball out of right there, yeah! Lucas McCauley changes the game by going right center. Robbie, what a call, man, right before. 
Get that cowboy hat on, big boy. Beautiful piece of hitting. Monster drive over the right center field wall. You think of where that pitch was too, Todd. I mean, we've seen so much good hitting on a pitch that's not a bad one. I mean, that's low and out, painted on its way down, but he went even further down to go get it, get the barrel underneath. And Lucas McCauley, he's been the MVP for this Nashville team. <laughs> Love to see the reaction of the parents as the pitching change has been made. Danny Boley out, new ball game. Kalish out. Tennessee showing some fight here. The top of the order has delivered. Now we're back, and this is another look at the home run from McCauley on a pitch that kept tailing down, but he got the good part of that bat on it. Jess, that's great extension right there, the hands. No drift whatsoever, head stayed still. The barrel, and we talk about this all the time. When the barrel gets to the ball, and your hands are in the right position to hit, good things always happen, just enough to get over the wall. How about just the second hit for Tennessee, too? <laughs> the biggest one, I mean, hits were hard to come by against Kalish. You know what was huge, too, was the at-bat from Nash Carter beforehand. He battled and battled and battled, got a walk, raised the pitch count on Kalish. He comes out of the game. Kalish would be eligible to pitch on Sunday if California stays alive that long. And now Nash Carter is going to head down to that Tennessee bullpen and throw some pitches. First home run of the World Series for Tennessee. And so now Ollie Parks is on to pitch for California. And Turner Blaylock is the three hole hitter up top of the fourth. A one run game, nobody out. Great. Parks just misses. As he gets welcomed into the strike zone of the night. Tight zone. That one was a little bit high. One ball, no strikes. Laylock followed by McCarty and Tabor. Right there at the letters, strike one. Turner struck out his first time up. He's got a couple of hits here in Williamsport. Julie. Ravi, I got Lucas McCauley's family. I found them, Jacob, younger brother, Matt, and Katie, the parents. How about the tournament that Lucas is having after the pitching display he put on last night and then that home run? Mom, what did you think? It was pretty awesome. Dad actually called it. He yelled real loud, flagpole. And if you look at it, it's right where it went. So proud of him. Flagpole? I thought you said swagpole at first. Flagpole. American, flag, American flagpole. I knew if he would aim towards it, that fix his swing. He's been real close. So that's all we needed. I, just, I, I knew in my gut that it was coming. Yeah. Jacob, what'd you do when he when he hit that homer, buddy? I thought it wasn't gone. I was like, run. I'm like, oh, okay, that's gone. All right, you do you. You do you. You do you. How many hats do we have on right now? Are we going for a record? Yeah. Five hats? Five, Five hats. hats. Yeah. Five hats. All right. All right. Did you teach him everything you know about baseball? Is that where it all came from? Tell them how to play video games. They're not baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're good at that, though. All right. Congratulations on that one. Bye, Cole. You know, he is a golfer. We had talked about that before the homer. That sounds exactly like something you'd say to a kid about to hit a shot. Like, see that flagpole? Aim it at the flagpole. In this case, go to right center, and it paid off. Strikeout there of McCarty. Danny Bolley did say, listen, we have a plethora of pitchers, and it seems like one after another. Right to the flagpole. You see it off in the distance, right center, Rab, exactly. Basically keep the front side in, drive everything that way. He did just that. Yeah, and Danny Bowley does have a plethora of pitches. He used five different pitchers in the regional. Parks gave him three in a third inning. Lappy, we've seen. Some of the kids, he says, are a little more thrower than they are a pitcher. And Parks, so far, behind 2-0, has looked very, very good. 
All very similar velocity, upper 60s. Just a little high, three balls, no strikes. Tabor's a good patient hitter. He's got four hits at the World Series. Hi, McKenzie, who's been a great glove at third, up next. Spins one in there for a strike. 3 0 curveball. <laughs> Seen it too many times. Unbelievable. Does it again. Ooh. Just missed, and that is a walk. Well, McKenzie has been dynamite in the field with his glove, diving play to his left. McCauley with a terrific pick at first. And how about the 48 hours that McCauley had last night's pitching gem and a homer tonight? Strike one. Kenzie's been their RBI hitter too, leading their team in RBIs. He's come up clutch. That's outside. Love the story about his dad, Ty, who of course was a football coach with the Dolphins and played for the Patriots and the Buccaneers and the Vikings. And finally has an August in which he can spend time with his son, his family. First in 29 years. It sets. I can relate to that a little bit with the whole summer, you know, and working. But and to his credit, uh, Amy, I'm sure, is delighted to have the help. Taylor, Tegan, Tatum, Tate, as young as nine months, and as old as Ty, right. who's 12. Good Ooh. swing. Good swing. front door breaking ball again. That's kind of been the go-to. Hey. Watch it. Yeah. Parks missed it. He threw it behind him. He was shaking his hand a little bit, his arm, prior to that pitch. And then he missed badly with the 2-2. How about Keldorf behind the plate, by the way? To catch that. <laughs> behind his head. Take some skill. Mm, that one hit him on the hand, and that hurts. You know, the three, the two-two pitch was nowhere close, and the three-two pitch right off of the wrist of McKenzie. Question's going to be, did it go off the bat or did it go off the hand? Is it a foul ball or is it a hit by pitch? The athletic trainer is out there checking on that left hand. Let's take another look at it. That's uh, that's all wrist. Yeah. Right on the bone, too. I remember how important Ty has been defensively, the plays that he's made at third base. The athletic trainers here have uh, have been very, very quick to rush out any time a player has been injured. And of course, very concerned mom there, Amy up. The umpires are all gathered. I believe it may have been called a foul ball initially. Is that is that right? They did, yes. Yeah, well they're gonna they're gonna now see that it wasn't a foul ball. Let's see, it looks like Ty, after talking with his coach and the trainer, appears as if he's considering staying in the game. They bring a helmet out for him to run. The 
the umpires are the ones that have dictated the review. Amy has moved all the way up to the fence to be as close as she can to her son, Ty. You can see her right there. Yeah, it's just instinct as a mama. Just want to go down there and make sure he's all right. Yeah, very unsettling for sure, and especially in an area in which there are so many bones that are very, very fragile and can easily oh. be broken. And that hits oh. so hard on that wrist. The umpire is still looking at the review to make sure that this is not a foul ball or confirm that it is. Everybody that has seen it at home is convinced on what happened there. It wasn't a swing. It's taking an awfully long time for what appears to be a very obvious outcome. So a hit by pitch. Here she comes. And here comes Stella Weaver. And here comes Danny Boley. Weaver will attempt to set a new record by a female at the Little League World get Series if she can get a hit. Not a big deal. You get ahead of these hitters, right? You just got to finish it. Well, you just got to get finish what you're doing, right? Get straight ahead, finish what you're doing. He's, he's, Come on, guys, let's go. Fire up. Let's go. Give me some bumps. Give me some go, knuckles. Go. I love you guys. Oh. Hey, oh, let's go. Get out of this inning. Let's go. Well, let's see. Stella Weaver, first and second. First pitch strike. She's a good fastball hitter, has gone to the right side and back up the middle. If she can turn on one, there's a huge amount of space in left center field. Ooh, off speed. She was off balance and a good pitch there from Parks. Stella, four hits in this Little League World Series, tying a record. Swing and a miss. Good job by Parks as he went fastball, breaking pitch, fastball. We will check on McKenzie, make sure he's okay to play the field. But the big blast off the head of the driver, Lucas McCauley, exit stage right. Brand new ball game, Nolansville fighting. One run to the bottom of the fourth, 3-2 California. Shortstop, what a backhand, what a play by Nash Carter. Oh, man! Wow. Trade Manson! Yeah. Look at these kids. He's been making plays. He's going to go track this one, and Weir makes the catch and hangs on. To third, he snared it. McCray, nice play. Wheel to the plate, the throw from Contreras. Perfect! Now he's coming, he makes a great catch out there in left field. Taylor, first, got him! Catch by Androshek. Oh man! Did a diving catch out there by Elo Sice. Yeah, and those didn't include the great plays from the earlier game here. Outstanding and certainly a great game here tonight with some web gems. This was earlier game between Texas and Washington and Day Day at shortstop. And he was seen earlier with the salute. We were trying to see if there was a salute after that play. It didn't appear to be, but it ended the game. And then tonight, McKenzie on the ground, a one hopper that McCauley was able to pick. And we have some defensive changes. McKenzie, after going out to first to run after he was hit by the pitch, 
is now out of the game, so they will they will check on that hand of his. That looks like him at second base. I don't think he's been taken out of the game. He's out there at second base. We got some bad information. That's a good sign to see Taylor. I see McKenzie at second, so he stays in the game. And he's going to have a chance here. Go get him, big fella. That a boy. There you go. <laughs> Paul finds you. I mean, just a test you move over to second base. Still trying to feel that glove hand. That's good. You're right. The ball will find you. And McKenzie, after getting drilled in the hand, able to make the play. Tough time squeezing that head. No problem doing that right there. Still mm. pain. I'm not sure it wasn't no problem. Mm. But. Little premise. Gideon Shepler strike. Nash Carter, the new pitcher. McCauley moves from first to short. Jackson Tabor over there at first, and Nash Carter is working quickly. Stella Weaver has moved into left field. Foul ball from Shepler. Pretty good hitter here. He's got two hits at the World Series. He struck out his first time up. California has 12 on the team. Way high. So it's the two kids with the experience at the Little League World Series trying to get them into a U.S. championship. First it was May, now Carter. And a little blooper, Barney, right there, the right fielder to make the play. Two down, Oracle Park, Sunday night. That's where we'll find the NL East leading Braves and the San Francisco Giants battling for a wild card spot. 7 Eastern time on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and of course ESPN Radio. There will be a Baseball Tonight Sunday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern Time. There will be a K-Rod cast with Michael and Alex. National League Wild Card Race is proving to be as exciting as the American League West Division Race. Here's Declan McRoberts, and that pitch sails outside. Nolanville's team just keeps fighting, keep moving along here. That's a good one. Three straight years, Ravi. That's pretty darn good. It's it's really good. And you were on a team that what, was three and five years, a team from Tom's River. Three, yeah, three out of five. Back to back to back years, coming out of a really difficult region, the Southeast. Three and two. Baker, Crew, O'Connor. This is Declan McRoberts. Baker, who had singled his first time up, just grounded out to McKenzie. And that missed off, so McRoberts on for the second time tonight after a single and a walk here. Bottom of the fourth and the United States elimination game, Tennessee and California. Washington waits the winner way inside. That one hit him. Quinn Bowley will reach. And now all of a sudden, two are on with two down. <laughs> Ollie Parks is coming up. Got a good swing. Fielder's choice, 6-4 is first time up. And one hit. These pitchers like to work so quick. Sometimes I think they work too quick. They try to get up and go, and body's not ready. Yeah, whether or not they get anything done here, it just gets them that much closer to the top of the order. That ball laced into left. Weaver coming and back, back, held back. at third base. Della gets it back into McCauley. So Jolly Park's got a good swing and they are loaded with two down. Good job by Stella out there and left after she moved over from right to quickly get that ball back in. Hey. We got two down, two down. We just need one out. That's all we need is one out. We're at the bottom of their order. We just need one out. I need diving bodies. Everybody wants the baseball, okay? Look at me in the face. Every single one of you wants the baseball. Sure. You hear me? Sure. And you're gonna get it right now and you're gonna make a play. We're gonna come back in and we're gonna score some runs, okay? Sure. 
You're my dude. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Any base and Finley Green. Finn 0 for 6 at the Little League World Series. What a time for him to deliver if he can. His first hit. Good pitch line shot. Yes! <laughs> Ty McKenzie! Justice served. <laughs> After getting drilled in the wrist, he makes two plays in the field. And that can bring a tear to mom's eyes. Just like Randy Huth said, who wants to make the play? I need you diving. And Ty McKenzie delivers. Just like that. That pain goes away after a beautiful diving catch. Little League Baseball World Series on ESPN is presented by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Our game track is really all about defense. We've got three runs for California, two for Tennessee. The defense has been outstanding. Lucas McCauley hit a two-run home run. He also has a scoop time. McKenzie was outstanding at 30, moves over to second. And a diving play to prevent a couple of runs from coming in. Caitlin started and a two-run triple in the third. Max Baker, who will let you know he's throwing a fastball, at least if last night was the any indication, because his hat will fall off. Yep. And when good. he throws a breaking pitch, it stays on. That's why to tip tip the pitches. <laughs> Stare at the hat. That flow. I've seen a lot of them here, Rav. Tons. You have it, flaunt it. Really good game. Tennessee and California. 3-2 winner to play Washington tomorrow. So Baker on the mound, Lappy, Brooks, Lee, and Kalish around the infield. Park, Salazar in center, McRoberts in right with Keldorf behind the plate. 10, 11, 12 due up in this inning, so the top of the order will come back up for Tennessee. And there's that fastball, and the hat flies off. Should be a delay in between every time. You there. would think that there's got to be some way to kind of bobby pin that on so it doesn't oh. happen every time. There's definitely a way. One ball, one strike. The off-speed pitch, hat stays on. No wonder why Eduardo Perez is so good at something like this. He picked up on it. Two and one to Barney, followed by Shepler, then Cyphers. That's inside. And it's a 3-1 count. Popped up, playable, Salazar calling everybody off, and he's there for the first out of the fifth. College football season ready to go Saturday, the 18th annual MEAC SWAC Challenge kickoff game. South Carolina State squares off against Jackson State, Center Park Stadium in Atlanta, and our celebration of HBCUs begins at 7.30 Eastern on ABC for the first time in the ESPN app. One down, here's Shepler. Off speed, and that one is over the head of the third baseman. Shepler will round first, and he'll stay there with a single, and that throw came in. Colby Lee does a good job to catch it. Talk about bottom of the order. See if they can come through. Getting big time here. Soft serve right over the third baseman's head. Little vanilla chocolate swirl. Hey, <laughs> getting into the sweets. We just <laughs> had the dogs. <laughs> Here's Corbin Cyphers. He's the catcher. Hey. This is the part of the order looking for their first hit. These bottom three have had good at bats, but trying to poke one through, and this would be the moment. One ball, one strike. I'm assuming Little League has a rule that requires you to wear a hat. Yeah. He 
Probably go a size smaller, too. Wow! <laughs> he doesn't push it down. He just, it's, it's just sits. It's resting. It's resting. <laughs> it's right. You gotta look good to play good, Frazier. Yeah, but if your hat falls off, <laughs> the, the looks goes away. <laughs> Cyphers right. to be followed right. by Gamillion barring a double play. He reaches out, and that's a fair ball. Shepard will go to third to second base. Back, Cyphers, back, second and third, one out. Corbin Cyphers first hit in Williamsport. And it's the bottom of the order delivery. Two strike hitting, Rav. Look at this three-quarter swing. <laughs> Literally just poke it. This is a foot off the plate. He has yet to get a hit. This is his first one. <laughs> Meets this one off the plate. Head up. I love it. Now Carter Gamillion. The outfield shifts. Big swing and a miss. Strike one. One down, second and third, tying run down there at third base. And hold on a second, the third base coach, he wants to talk to Gamillion. All right, you're going to have to choke up. They're playing back in the infield. What does that mean? We need a, we need a ground ball or something yes, to get this run. Yes, sir. And we tie the ball game. Yes, sir. Can we do that? Yes, sir. Shorten it up, hit me a ground ball to the second baseman, we get a run. Let's yes, go. Great coaching. First swing, he's swinging for the fences. He's he, like. He was, he was trying to hit it a gold million miles. <laughs> Touche. Shortened up a little bit, Carter Gramillion trying to get these runners in. 3 2 California, winner eliminated. A winner stays alive, loser eliminated. Oh, off speed, there's a roller. And now coming home, there's the throw. Out at home. Gideon Shepard went on contact. Kalish fielded it. And he did a really good job of reading the runner and waiting for him to commit before he got it to Keldorf. Tying run, cut down at home. Good job, too, by Kalish. Just reading it, making sure that he did commit to home because he had paused. Makes the throw, the execution. How many times do we see that rush gets thrown away or dropped at home plate? Now Cyphers moves up to third. He's the catcher. He's got a good eye. Watch if the ball gets by. Whoa, Grayson whoa. May fouls off his foot. This has been a huge advantage, guys, because they have not had pass balls or wild pitches at all. I think strategy-wise, you send Gamillion here, make him draw a throw, go halfway, try and sneak a run in here to tie the game. Do I think they'll throw it? Probably not. Call strike two. Gamillion fell down. He's in a rundown. Here comes the runner home. Safe! We are tied! Oh. I'll tell you what, Ravi, that looked like a planned play to me. He did not trip. I'll, t I'll explain it to you right now. We could see that replay. He fell down on purpose to make him draw the throw. Watch him, Gamillion at first base. Oh, my. Let me pretend. Backdoor play. Snuck in there. 3-3. Three, three. Pitch outside. Kalish turned around. He thought perhaps Gamillion was going to come back to the base because he bought it, if it was in fact a fake, to fall down. Big swing and a miss from May. That'll do it. They get the run in. Take a look at it. Three years in a row, you got some tricks up your sleeve. Flavor Frey says this was an intentional trip. I'm telling you, you see the crazy things. We've seen hidden ball tricks. Watch Gamillion. Oh, let me just fall down, make the throw. Turned his back, next thing you know, run scores. I'm stealing that one next year. Oh, that was close too, Robbie. It sure was, but was up a little bit. Still tied. Welcome back, everyone. Great games today. ESPN's coverage of the Little League World Series is presented by T-Mobile. You can find Little League on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the official handles at Little League. Follow the action. Join the conversation with LL 
WS. Frazier, the fall down. Convinced that Carter Gamillion bit the dust on purpose. Watch him at first base. Look, <laughs> you know, Carl, I'm telling you, he fell down on purpose. It worked to perfection because first baseman turned around. Let's look here. Foot is up, tag is on. Oh, my. That might come back to haunt you there. It might, but we'll find out as the game plays out. First pitch as it's Colby Lee, hitter 11, and then Lennon Salazar, 12, and then back to the very, very dangerous top of the order for California. Bottom five of this one, 3-3. Three, three. One ball, one strike. Brody Brooks, two hits. Lucas Lewis Lappy, two hits. They are lurking. They will hit third and fourth if they get there in this inning. He spoils one. Well, the day has been full of everything you could ask for. Home runs, unbelievable defense, great pitching, perhaps some trickery on the base paths. Lead a second. McKenzie got it there. He's playing in some pain, but he's playing well. I just to see so the smile. I'd love that. Credit to this Nolanville team. The smile there from Ty. Everything that he's been through. Now getting more balls at second base right. that he moved there from over from third. Comes from a tough family. Sure does. Lennon Salazar is up, he fouls that off, and Brody Brooks is on deck. California scored one in the first, two more in the third. They let it three zip. Tennessee gets two in the fourth, one in the fifth. It's tied, and it's one and one. Oh, what is this? Sister Salazar. The yellow dress, every game. Spinner that misses. McKenzie at second and third tonight has a total of five assists. <laughs> None of them have been easy. None. Salazar, big swing and a miss. Frazier quickly the count. Two, two. That is perfect. And a big one there for the second out of the inning. But now it gets a little more difficult. What a test here for Nash Carter and Nolansville to deal with Brody Brooks and Lewis Lappy if they can get there. The top five in the California order, look at that. 488, four homers. Second, McKenzie. He has it. He's got no play, but he was able to stop it. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, man, he is a wall. Nothing's getting past Ty McKenzie. However, Brooks is on, and he is three for three tonight. <laughs> and now even more dangerous, Lewis Lappy. He's got two singles. He's got two homers. He got jammed there. That's the only way that anyone's ever been able to keep him quiet. Up and in on the hands. I would throw four pitches in and in and into him. That one to right. It's deep. It's gone. Lewis Lappy leaves Lomity. A two run shot, 5 3 California. Brooks and Lappy are six for six. Oh. Saying Lappy missed home plate. Good 
looking at the first base umpire and he's like, I, I didn't see that. Got to call. You got to get time in first and then throw it to him. Yeah, he's on it. Barely. Yeah, but the left heel was on it. He's explaining on how he is supposed to do this. I don't know how you make the call. Take a deep breath and calm down. Everybody, stop and take a deep breath. You're going to step on the mound. Let him get in the box. Then you're going to step off and you're going to tell the home plate, uh, home plate umpire you would like to appeal home plate that he missed for home plate. Wait, then you're going to throw it to Corbin where do I feel it? to the home plate to the umpire. You're going to say I want to appeal home plate that the, he did not touch home. Then you're going to throw it to Corbin. He's going to touch home plate. OK, relax. Funny to see both all parents on their phones trying to figure out here. Somebody tell me what's going on. Well, it's a unique situation. Let's hope a the Carter does it right, and let's hope they get the call right, which likely would lead them to say we need to make an umpire review on it. He called him out. He called him out for missing the plate. Yeah, and Bowley's going to come out and say we've got to look at that. This is going to be turned back the other way. I don't know how the first base umpire makes that call unless Corbin Cypher sold it so well that he convinced the umpire. Well, he must have seen it. So one run if this does if this is upheld the one run has run to score would count. But let's watch the left foot. He's right there on top of it too. Look at the umpire. He's looking. I'm sorry. His foot's on the. Yeah. On no, the, he's on the there. Base. It, it's just a missed call. So, if, if the replay proves what it seems to prove to everybody, that's a two run home run and it's 5 3. But I say this Corbin Cyphers can sell anything. <laughs> He was so convinced and he's looking too. I mean Cyphers is in front of the plate looking back but he gets home plate. Now I will say his right foot probably missed it but the left foot got it. It'll be a lesson for Lewis Lappy and every member of the California team yeah. when you have a homer let's make sure we we get all of home plate. But they will review it and then they will acknowledge this is a two run home run. And Tennessee's going to have to come out of their dugout. All right. Shouldn't be that hard, huh, Rabbit? I don't understand what's going on, but it's safe. California has been told. Tennessee's sort of still waiting for this whole thing to play out. It wasn't very demonstrative. Nobody really pointed to home and said safe. But it's a two run home run and now Tennessee is going to have to go back on the field down five three. Lappy does it again. He does it again. <laughs> My goodness. He's three home runs at the Little League World Series. All parts of the field too. He's been the center. He's been the left. He's been the right. Fastball center cut stayed inside man. Look at that triangle right there from your hands to your elbows. That kid can hit the ball. Now you knew it was going to be difficult to get through the top and now we're going to go appeal second base. And he said he's safe the third base umpire saw it. And a little bit of game plan here from Tennessee. Brooks and Laffey tonight three 
for three. Six for six combined, and they are responsible for all five of the runs. And this is going to get to the screen down the third baseline. I got to believe, I mean, this is just sort of an opinion that Cyphers was so demonstrative. He caught the umpires by surprise because Lappy was so emphatic about hitting home. And Cyphers saw maybe the front foot, which missed, but the back was on. Kalish delivers his second hit. He's got a triple and a single. All with two outs, two out stakes. Started with the base hit. Home run came next. This is another good hitter, Keldorf. And he looks at a high one. If they can keep it here at the top of the order, meaning McCauley, Carter, they're coming up for Tennessee in the top of the sixth inning. But they have to keep it here. One and one. That runs high. Nope. Three balls and a strike. And here goes Cyphers out there, and this is what he does. He will tell Carter, breathe. Let's forget about what happened. Calm down. Spoke to him before the game about all these trips out there. They're very quick, and he does it on his own. There's no nudge from the coaching staff. Three and two. I'd say this has been the most eventful, interesting day <laughs> that I've ever had here at Lomity. Just given all that has happened, all the great defense. There's a strikeout, and that ends it. We head to the sixth. Home run ball starting to fly here. Lewis Lappy leaves the big World Series. Texas and Washington. Winner's bracket game and Texas. They won it. They beat Washington. Good game. Great defense. They'll play Saturday and they'll try to win the United States championship. Washington looking to get a spot in that game and so will the winner of this one. Thursday at 7, Randy Huth trying to get his team up for the top of the sixth. Hi guys. This is what dreams are made of. Okay, this is what dreams are made of. Ever since you were a little kid, you dreamed of being on this field, in this situation, with a chance to hit something that wins the game. You've dreamed of it your whole life, and now we have the chance to make it come true. Every one of you has. It'll be the top of the order against California's best pitcher, Brody Brooks. Nash Carter swings wildly at the first one. It's 0-1. this age, there are some throwers, then there are some pitchers, and Brooks is the pitcher. And a good swing by Carter, but he's behind 0-2, 72 miles an hour from 46 feet away. Need him to get on. McCauley can run into one and tie it. Off speed, and this is an easy play right there for Brooks. And there you saw fastball, fastball, and either slider or curveball to get the out. One down for Lucas McCauley. Homeward in the fourth, two run shot. Definitely slider sweeper. That's filthy. Ah! Might be the only fastball he sees this at bat. Brooks is ready. Here it comes. Oh, he fooled him, man. He nodded him up like a pretzel with an inside corner slider. One out away from moving on. Mm. There is absolutely nothing you can do there. Back up, 
curveball. Mm, Last chance, Turner Blaylock. On the ground is short. Diving is there. Lappy. He gets up and he throws him out. California wins it and they will play again tomorrow. Boy, the combination, Jess and Frazier, of Brody Brooks and Lewis Lappy pitching and hitting the difference in this ballgame. Yeah, we talked about it before the game started. Four home runs between both of them. Make it five now. They are clicking on all cylinders, and they're hitting the ball. 11 hits today for the team. Perfect ending, too for the entire day to have a big defensive play yep. from Lappy. That's what we've seen be the difference all day today on this field. That'll be the end for Stella Weaver. Stella and the fellas, a memorable Little League World Series for her. And now both teams come together after the handshake. You got some tears on one side, a lot of hugs and handshakes from the other. Ty McKenzie was outstanding. McCauley goes deep. Stella sets a record or ties a record for hits by a female in a Little League World Series. And Danny Boley and Randy Huth and the coaching staffs say so long to each other. It'll be a West Coast game tomorrow. Washington and California, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Texas awaits the winner. What a day at Lomity. Defense, pitching, homers, a lot of passion, a lot of frustration, a lot of energy, and the culmination of an incredible summer for the kids from Nolansville. Maybe they're back here again for the fourth year next year. Give Lappy some love. The homer and defense ended. California wins at 5-3. We'll see you tomorrow at 3. For our entire crew, I'm Carl Ravage saying so long from Williamsport.